Well, we're right here at the Northern District Police Station at this hour where there is a desperate search for a killer right now. Gunfire ripped through York Road at Cold Spring Lane about 7.30 tonight. And police say the targets were the operators of a city sanitation truck. Tonight, one of them is dead, the other critically injured. And a few moments ago, Commissioner Michael Harrison issued a desperate plea for help. At 7.23 p.m., it was still daylight and people were out. Many people were out. And so we know someone saw something, heard something, and knows something. And we're asking and pleading with you to come forward because we now have two city employees who have been injured, one of whom has died from his injuries. We need to want better for Baltimore. You can't continue to say you want our city to be better and to be cleaner if you literally will be quiet when someone who gave his life to clean your city is shot and murdered. We can't accept that. A few moments ago, officers cleared that scene and reopened York Road to traffic. Tonight, they're searching for one, possibly more suspects involved in the shooting. Targeting of two city employees has leaders calling for some kind of radical change in the city. One city leader telling Fox 45 the double shooting of two DPW workers spells a total disregard for human life in the city of Baltimore. All of our condolences to a life that we lost last night. At a community cleanup, the attention of Mayor Brandon Scott focused once again on what he called another senseless killing in the city, this time a city sanitation worker. Well, we had someone cowardly uh, take his life and shoot uh, one of his co-workers. That is not something that we can accept, y'all. A little more than 24 hours earlier. We can live in a city where people do not die so often over stupid stuff. Similar words of anger and frustration from the mayor at the scene. The intersection of York Road and Willow, where police found two DPW workers who had been operating a sanitation vehicle with gunshot wounds. One of the men died at the hospital. The other is critical. The police commissioner saying an argument broke out between a group of men and the workers before the shooting. It's reaching the stage of hopelessness. Bishop Angel Nunez with Act Now Baltimore with a mission to make change in the city. This raising the urgency to crisis proportions. We've become so demoralized. Uh, life has lost its value. A shooting investigators say happened a little before 730, still daylight, without offering specifics in a statement the mayor said, I am committed to working with Commissioner Harrison and City Administrator Shorter to keep city employees safe. I personally don't think that there's anything that can be done to, to protect them 100%. I mean, you know, these are these workers. Next, what is it? The thing the bishop and the mayor agree on, a culture of violence must change. It needs a radical approach. We need more than programs. When we need more than money, we need more than police officers. We need the entire community to rise up. But well, police have not yet identified the victims and investigators are still searching for the shooter. And our top story at four, City Council President Nick Mosby's tax tangle continues. The, fe the federal $45,000 lien lists both the council president, his wife, state's attorney Marilyn Mosby, on it. Mackenzie Frost is live in Baltimore. Mackenzie, you asked Nick Mosby directly today about the lien. What did he have to say? Yeah, Mary, that's right. The city council president's story about this federal tax lien has been changing a little bit. First, he told us it was being taken care of. Then last week on the radio, he said there was no lien. Today, I took a copy of a lien directly to him to get some answers, and his story is changing again. Today, we tried to catch up with Council President Nick Mosby to talk about that federal tax lien that appears to still be on his property, placed a year ago, March 2020. Mr. Council President, hi. I'm sorry, we run into a boat check. Yeah, you guys I, over there? I just wanted to ask you really quick, you've denied the existence of your tax lien on your property multiple no, times. I have not multiple times. It, can you, can you do, say that this is the actual lien on your property? Yeah. You can talk to my attorney. Listen again. Look, you've denied the existence of your tax lien on your property multiple no, times. I have not multiple times. <laughs> but less than a week ago, Mosby went on WYPR radio and denied the lien multiple times. No, Tom, there's no lien placed on my home right now. There was never a lien on my property. This is not a lien on, on the property. There was never 
a lien that was rendered on my property. There is no lien on my property. There's never been a, a lien on my property. It's not a lien on my property. I don't have a property lien. You've denied the existence of your tax lien on your property multiple times. Mosby ignoring my attempts to confirm that the lien is still on his property and seemingly ignoring the YPR host when confronted with it as well. It does appear that there is in fact a lien or there was at one time a lien on your property. Let me ask you to respond. Staying silent for 12 seconds. Mr. Council President, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. No answer from Mosby then. Yeah. You can talk to my attorney. Or today. Just a door slammed in my face. Now, I've talked to several tax attorneys who say that there could be a, a deal or a workout in place with Mosby and the IRS to pay off that $45,000, perhaps in installments. But the attorney says that there usually are receipts to prove that that is in place. So far, Mosby has not talked about that or provided any sort of receipts. Reporting live, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News.